I hear some more noise, please? Noise. Amazing. So uh, welcome, welcome to GDG Chennai, and um, this is the first ever uh, large scale event that we are doing in Chennai, and uh, I'm really proud to be, uh, you know, in the core organizing team. So I'm Karthik, by the way, and uh, I manage the GDG Chennai chapter with uh, some of the amazing folks in Chennai, like Vinod, uh, uh, Jayant, and, and uh, some more people who have been, uh, you know, helping this community grow constantly. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for coming. And uh, today is going to be, uh, you know, a milestone in GDG Chennai's uh, event history. So from today, we are going to see a lot of events happening in Chennai uh, in the name of GDG Chennai. And uh, I'd like to specially thank uh, Bhumika, who is here from uh, Google. And uh, she has been helping us organize the events from Google. And uh, Google is sponsoring this event. Yeah, so once again, thank you all for coming and um, we'll have a great day today. So uh, as I told, Google has been sponsoring this event and uh, they have been providing some amazing support. The ambience and uh, everything is, uh, you know, their uh, support. Now, uh, I'd like to give you a small introduction about uh, GDG Chennai. And uh, by the way, how many know what the GDG Chennai is and uh, have you been to events before? No, okay. So, uh, GDG Chennai uh, started off, uh, you know, about two years back and uh, it was uh, kind of had a slow start and then uh, we went ahead and had some of the small scale events uh, like, you know, Android Hackathon. It was a two day Android Hackathon and uh, we also did some, uh, you know, Google I.O. extended events, which was very small scale. But uh, we thought, OK, let's go to the extreme and do something big. So that is the reflection that you're seeing today. And uh, DevFest is uh, one of the events that we have planned this year. And there are some more events to come in the following months. And I'd like to specially thank Mr. Dorei Tudla for uh, coming out here in a very short span of uh, uh, time. And uh, I think he deserves a round of applause for making it here. So uh, this is all uh, about GDG Chennai and uh, GDG stands for uh, Google Developers Group and it's been supported by Google and the community is open to any topic that you guys discuss. So uh, let it be Android or let it be uh, Node.js or uh, any other technology that you would like to learn, just uh, put it to us and we'll be able to do something to the community. So welcome to GDG Chennai and now I think you guys are a part of GDG Chennai, aren't you? Can I have a big S? Yes. yes. Amazing. So um, today we are at DevFest and uh, it's going to be Android all about Android. And uh, we'll be seeing some amazing hacks, sessions, and Arduino boards, and all of those stuff. And uh, an amazing interview that's going to happen right ne next after my talk. So what's going to happen here? I'll quickly run through the agenda. There might be some changes in the agenda also when we uh, go ahead with the for the day. And uh, first off, uh, I'm talking and then uh, it is an amazing interview waiting for you uh, by Dorei Todla and uh, then we'll have uh, a short tea time and also we'll go ahead with some more sessions that are really interesting and uh, we have got the speakers coming in right away. So uh, how do you feel? How do you think uh, you guys had a start for the day? Yeah? Okay, anyways, the host for the day will be uh, Vinod uh, who is the founder of Infisec and um, the day will be constantly supported by me and Jayanthan and uh, almost every other organizing team with this uh, red tag in them. Okay? So if you guys want any help, just come back to us and we'll be able to help you. Thank you. I can't hear the last person. Good morning. Good morning. Wait, wait. I want that day to shout. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good. Right. So I am Vinod Chandel and people generally call me as Vinod. Right? This is called the sh uh, shameless self-promotion. Okay, so I'm Vinod and I'm primarily known for ethical hacking, right? I'm known in the industry for ethical hacking. I do a variety of information security based project, which means I'll be able to hack into Gmail. Okay, I was kidding. So, uh, and uh, primarily what I do is trying to help you, you know, facilitate this day's program, right? So, uh, I mean, how many of you have an idea about what we are planning to do for the day? Hey Vinod, I've come here just for the lunch. How many say that? Yeah, you'll be having a lots of questions, I bet. Okay, this day, 
I'll tell you how we have organized this day, right? We have around six to seven speakers, right? The day is going to be started with a good interview session, right? Sir, I'm very scared of interviews already. No, I've attended a lot. Anyway, this time, there will be six speakers. They'll be showing 200 pages of PPT slides for every minute. They'll be passing three slides. How does that sound? I'm feeling sleepy already. Isn't it? So be cheerful. This entire day is going to be filled with a lot of fun activities, right? And you'll also have an excellent experience of learning something. When you go back from the day, you'll be having something to carry back. Doesn't mean that we'll be giving you goodies, no. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to keep asking around a lot of questions, right? For people who answer, they are going to be rewarded. Yes? Okay. I'm going to start the way, uh, day with a very interesting question. And I'm going to separate this entire lot into two halves, A and B. A, please raise your hands, no? A. Good. B. A. Good man, yeah, attentive. Okay. Now, what we plan to do is, this question is for both the teams, right? I want someone to raise their hands and name 20 Google's product and get a freebie right away. I'm going to give you three seconds. One, two. Okay, he's rising like this. Probably he knows only half. Ten. Okay. How many of you want to answer this? 20 Google's product. Okay, we'll give that last person. And just pass on the mic there. Yeah, please introduce yourself. Yeah. Praveen. What? What Praveen? Okay. Have a cheerful introduction, man. Yeah? Start. Yeah, Praveen from Hindustan College of Arts and Science. Okay. Let's give a good clap. Yeah. Okay. He's going to help us with 20 Google products. Start one. <laughs> Sorry? Google Ad Space. Google Ad. Sir, out of portion. Okay. We'll pass it to him. Please be seated. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm, Srinivas. I'm coming from Jerusalem Engineering College. Okay. Ready? Yeah, start. Don't run away. Google Wallet. Okay. Google Wave. Wave. Gmail, G Books. G Four, Plus. Five. G Plus? Google Plus. Okay. Five. Five. App Engine. Six. Android. Seven. That's bad, man. Okay. G Drive. G Drive. Okay. Please be seated. You? I am Varun. Varun. SA Engineering College. Gmail. R code. 2. Google Plus. E. Android. 4. YouTube. 5. Google Drive. 6. Google Chrome. 7. Chrome OS. 8. Mm. Um, wallet. 9. Wallet. Google Maps. 10. Google Currents. 11. Google Translate. 12. Blogspot. Blogger. 13. And um, GTalk. 14. And Gmail. 15. And, uh, Other. Friends, 15. Wait, sir, wait, sir. Google Glasses. Google Glasses. Okay. 16. And Google SketchUp. 17. And, uh, oh my god, I'm going to give this away. Okay. Google Docs. Docs. Google Earth. Okay. And uh, 19. Adsense. Adworks, AdSense. 20. Let's give a good round of applause. Thank you, sir. Shall I give this away to him? No. I actually don't want to give. You know why? No. He did not say Google.com. That's mean. Anyway, good man. Okay. So, you know, we have a rival already in place, Varun, right? Today we are going to compete with him. We'll try to bag as many as gifts possible. 
Yes? 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 Okay, perfect. So, why are we here? What are you doing here? Now, why have I come here? Oh, this is all a million dollar question. Now, so uh, to give a brief idea about what we are planning to do for the day and what is Google Dev Fest. You know what is Google Dev Fest? Dev Fest. Possibly it should be? Exactly. Right? So Google has a program organized yearly once in their headquarters, California, right? It's called Google I.O. Heard about it? What is I.O.? Yeah, computer science engineering students. Good. Okay. I.O. is otherwise called as? Input output, then, huh? Okay. No? Okay, let's forget that. Even I don't know. Right? Okay, so they actually organize it in a huge, massive scale, right? And adjacent to that, you know, we, we got a lot of contributions from a variety of people in the world. And Google, you know, people love Google for their entire architecture of all the variety of tools they have, right? So they started something called the GTUG. Stands for Google Technology User Group, right? Okay, then they started up something called the GDG. Stands for Google Developer Group. Amazing. Now, what happens in technology user group and developer group? People use technical products, right? So that is for technology user group, and this is for developers. More into Google APIs, how to implement in certain applications, and so on, right? So that is for GDG. Now, this program also is conducted in Google's headquarters, right? It's called the Google GDG. And how many of you have heard about TED, TED, right? OK, perfect. TED has the program conducted in there office in the you know headquarters in the US, but they have an extended TED that happens called the TEDx. Okay? Similarly, you also have something called the DevFest X that happens across the globe. Do you understand? So as a part of DevFest X, right, we are organizing this program. And the interesting part here is X stands for an independently organized program. Yes? Now Google's DevFest X stands for an independently organized program. Now, Google is very serious that, no, we don't want you to organize you know, in terms of sponsoring yourself. We'll sponsor it. They're generous enough for that, right? So they asked us just one request, which is cutting the X off, right? Which means they want to have Google DevFest across the globe. Good? OK. So this particular Google I.O., right? It started in the May 2008. From then on, you'll never believe there are lots of very interesting facts and figures I'll start sending you across, right? OK. The very interesting fact here, the Google Technology User Group was started in January 2008, Silicon Valley. Then GTUG, OK. The last very interesting part is there are approximately, they are active in almost 85 countries in the world, right? and which has almost 256 chapters across. Interesting? Out of which, in India alone, we have. And in Chennai, we are kind of becoming active, right? So next year, we are looking forward for your contribution to make it massive and a huge success. Yes? OK, perfect. OK. So how many of you know what is the meaning of Google? Google actually stands for? Yeah. How many of you know that Google is misspelled? Right? You know, probably when I write my name, V I N O D, right? I write V I N O T H at times. Right? So that's a misspell. So similarly, this also evolved. There are a variety of companies in India, I think, no, because of Google, they misspelled the name and they're huge success now. I think Flipkart also started that way. F L I P K A R T. Should be C A R T, isn't it? Okay, good. Now I saw this very interesting picture outside a church. OK, this is from a church that's actually in Canada. It says, there are some questions that can't be answered by even Google. Come in. Come and pray. You understand what, what it means? It says, there are some questions that can't be answered even by Google. Come inside and just pray. You understand? Good? OK. So. I'll be coming up across with a variety of very interesting facts and figures. So I don't want you to see this slide at the moment. I just have a small video to start with today.
to the over 6,000 people here, to our Google I.O. viewing parties that are happening all around the world, to the over 1 million people who will be watching live stream on YouTube. Welcome to Google I.O. It's been a pretty busy year, and I'm thrilled to announce our latest milestone. One million new Android devices are activated every single day. We're introducing Nexus 7. It's a beautiful 7-inch tablet. It's running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. We brought together the power of Android and Google Play to develop the first consumer electronics product Google has ever designed and built from the ground up. We call it Nexus Q. Like, even the ports are high quality. I'm a, I'm a huge geek. This is like, this is my Christmas. Uh, there's a lot of cool things that have come out on the Chrome side we're pretty excited about. It's an exciting demo to see Chrome on Android phones, Android tablets, and now on the iPhone and the iPad. So no matter which device you're using, we are working really hard across all important software platforms. No other browser vendor is doing this. And as of today, we've almost doubled again to 310 million active users. By our internal metrics, Chrome is the most popular browser in the world globally. Cirque du Soleil in a browser. What a fantastic challenge. We created this world completely in HTML. This is what happens when you add 10,000 cores to your application. That's the kind of scalability and performance that Google can deliver. In just one year, over 250 million people have upgraded to Google+. In life, we plan, we party, we keep in touch. We think software should make all of that more awesome. That's why today, we're so excited to be announcing Google Plus events. I'm always surprised by the capability of developers to party. Over a thousand people turned on party mode and contributed over 13,700 photographs from last night's concert. Google, it's as big as it gets, and it's as cool as it gets. Now who wants to see a demo of Glass? And they're off. There's only one good way down the side of the building. Don't run anybody over. When they jumped out of the blimp onto the Moscone Center and they were held off the side and biked it in, that was the most exciting thing I saw. This, ladies and gentlemen, truly is the best time ever to deliver and to build for the web. It's just the love that Google gives back to their developers. Thank you all very much. Okay, so how many of you want to reproduce something like this again in Chennai? How many of you? Raise your hands properly. Great. Okay. My other question, how many of you use Gmail? Wow, I want all of you to turn back and see. Have your hands raised and turn back. Okay. How many of you do at least five Google searches a day? Pretty interesting. More than five, huh? Sir, if I did not have Google, I would have never passed my max. Right. Okay. So, I wish to introduce the first session for the day, right? Mr. Durey and Mr. I'm very sorry, Mr. Raj Shekhar, right? So, I actually want to have a small introduction saying about what they do, etc., right? They, I, I'm pretty sure you must have all been gifted to have people or mentors like this because they have been proving a lot of things, you know, in terms of, you know, the people generally say, this can't be done, that can't be done, right? I'll tell you one thing. The best part in one's life is doing what people say you cannot do. How many say yes? The best part in one's life is doing what people say you cannot do, right? 
I am sure these people are the role models for you, right? Can we have the chairs, right? So, now I want the morning session to be inaugurated with the interview session, interview where Mr. Durai actually interviews him, right? As to how they got into this role and what they exactly do today, etc. So that it's it's going to be an informal talk kind of an interview, wherein you there, there are going to be a lot of questions going to ask, and I insist again for people from the audience who are also going to throw them questions are going to get a good freebie. Wow, we know that I didn't expect this. How many of you are ready to ask a question? See, interview is not started. People are ready to ask questions. Good? Okay. Uh, I'll just go through what Mr. Durai is. Like Mr. Durai Todla, he's the founder of iMorph, right? And he's the CTO of Coromandel previously, right? His previous experiences. He's the tech advisor at CoSoft and interestingly, achievements from his sites, right? So he's a chartered member of Tycon Chennai, right? And he's the advisor of Next Wave Multimedia and mentor of NASCOM Mentor Group. And interestingly, he's the chief mentor at KCG College, right? Anyone from KCG? Really interesting, man. You have someone from your alumni then. Okay, pretty good. And people who have plans of having their own startups, etc. I think there's no better person you can reach out to, right? He advises a lot of startup companies in terms of shaping up themselves into a mature company and a product, right? So here we have Mr. Durai Todla. applications for you know mobile and tablet devices they pioneer in a lot of uh, technologies in that space right and a few of his accolades they have actually won lots of you know uh, awards and prizes across the globe and interestingly they have made approximately six uh, you know national awards and two international awards right one of which is TechSpark right I, I want you all to give a good round of applause for him let's have Mr. Ajinder also here So I just pass on the mic to both of them, right? Please be keen in case you have any questions, please throw it and you'll be probably getting a freebie. Yeah, good. Thank you so much. Good morning. Okay, so we keep saying good morning and we expect you to repeat good morning. It's I think just basically to wake up all the others for whom this is not a very good morning, right? I was, I was surprised at the, uh, when I tried to get in, I couldn't and I had to push a few people and say, excuse me, excuse me to come inside. And I was amazed at the amount of uh, crowd here on a Saturday morning. In fact, I was telling Bhumika that geeks never get up before 11 o'clock in the morning. How come there are so many of them here? Okay. Um, among all the uh, interesting things uh, that I do, uh, besides, you know, whatever Vinod mentioned, one of the things that I'm really happy about is that we run a community called Chennai Geeks, okay? I'm one of the co-founders, but we are over 1,000 people uh, on Facebook. So you may, you know, this is one of those kinds of things if you want to join and if you want to meet a lot of fellow geeks, um, you know, that's a good place to do. Uh, before we, we actually start the interview process, uh, you may all be wondering, why are we these two old guys sitting here in the dais doing some, you know, like, there is a look at the average age and means probably around less, less than 20 here. Um, so we, we'll try to keep it interesting. The idea is that um, there's a lot of exciting things going on in the world. There are some really major technologies that are going to change your lives, and you're going to see over the next... 10, 15 years, things that I've never seen before. I mean, and I'm amazed when I started computers, it was like some punch cards and stuff like that. And today, you know, I'm carrying around a, um, you know, Samsung Note and, you know, sketching things on it and in that, couldn't, can't even imagine that much of uh, interesting things happening. But the best part of um, any technology evolution is to be part of it, to participate. And not just to consume the technology, but to help in producing it. So I'm really, really happy that we have this Google Developers Group coming in here. Let me start with a couple of questions. How many of you in this group are students? Wow. Fantastic. 
That's awesome. How many of you are entrepreneurs? Okay, great. All right. So our job here during this uh, session is to convert all these students into all those entrepreneurs and at least tell you what it means to do it. It's not nothing uh, very serious. It's going to be a lot of fun and with uh, technologies like cloud, uh, you know, Android and mobile devices and all kinds of really cool sensors and stuff like that coming up. Um, it is, it's going to be a lot of fun to start up companies. Even if you take up a job, you can still do very interesting things on the side. So um, a little bit of intro to uh, Rajendran. Uh, Raj and I go back, uh, you know, f several years back. Um, you know, when I first met him, uh, I came to know that they were working on a lot of games and a lot of apps for mobile devices. And then I said, hey, you know, it will be cool for us to kind of come and share uh, all the learning. So what we'll do is we'll have an interview with a few questions. Ideally, you know, I have a list of about 10 of them. But maybe I'll ask about four or five of them, and then I'm going to open it up. Because I don't want to stand in the way of get you getting all these cool awards. So come on, ask questions. And no question is stupid, right? You can ask any question. We'll assume that you know nothing about app development and game development. So anything you ask is fair game, right? And uh, we'd love, you, love to have you ask this one. I'm going to sit down and just start a conversation. We'll show, start with showing you a couple of games that they have built. And then you know, we'll go from there, OK? All right. Raj, welcome. Um, so why don't you just tell a little bit of the story of how you started on, uh, in these building products and games, especially games. Okay. Uh, we've been in the um, services, IT services space uh, for over 10 years. Uh, and in the last uh, five years, uh, we started building uh, games casual games for big brands like uh, okay, uh, Reebok and... Uh, can you hear him in the back? No. no. Okay. Maybe can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So, uh, for the past 10 years, we've been an IT services company. And um, the later part of the 10 years, the last uh, four or five years, uh, there was a lot of demand for building uh, branded games uh, from our clients in Europe. Uh, you know, we, they were uh, like brands like Nestle, uh, Reebok, Pepsi, Coke. So these were small casual games uh, that we were doing as part of our services business. And um, uh, some of the games uh, did very well and some of them, uh, one, one was a uh, virtual world game which we built for Nestle. It did extremely well for the, for the brand. It also won a uh, digital uh, in a marketing award uh, in Europe. So, it, um, so after a long uh, time in services where you know, some of our products even won awards, we were virtually unknown. So at that point in time, we took a call that you know maybe you know we need to build our own products because we have over the last ten years and uh, you know gotten that skills and nicely matured into a uh, organization that delivers a, a globally uh, a competitive product. So uh, three years back, we decided we'd start build our own uh, products, and that's how we started building our own uh, games and apps. Can we see a couple of games before we start? Okay. Uh, I'll start with one, uh, which is a World Cricket Championship. It's the latest trailer, trailer of, for the game, which just went uh, live uh, uh, about a week back. Um, this is uh, the fastest growing cricket game on uh, Google um, uh, Play, uh, on the Android platform. Uh, if you, I think there are a few thousand five-star ratings uh, for the game. Uh, let me just play the trailer first, and then we'll come back to the game. Uh, th just uh, this is a world cricket championship it's a, a game w uh, which has three games Uh, 
this getting into this game uh, was uh, really scary. Uh, doing cricket game is very scary uh, in India because it's a very very crowded space. You have all the big guys, uh, you know, like uh, India games. Everybody already in there, very well entrenched. So we came in from behind, and uh, uh, today it's the fastest growing uh, cricket game across all platforms, including uh, people, the big studios wanting to buy the game out from us. Amazing, amazing. So what made you like take? The one of the most popular games and add all these like the fantasy aspects to it. And was there a lot of demand from people? Oh, okay. Um, as a first step, uh, you know, this game uh, we built uh, uh, WCC was World Cricket Championship and then we uh, World Premier League and uh, it's a two two and a half year development time. So once we completely finished uh, building the and the proper cricket game, we wanted to innovate on top yeah, on top of it. You know, uh, keep building the game, make it better and better. So we, um, uh, that was one reason, motivation. How do we innovate? I mean, cricket game is a cricket game. How do we take it for forward, you know, uh, beyond that? And um, that was one motivation. The other motivation was, uh, how do you monetize? I mean, uh, we have uh, nearly 2 million uh, uh, users uh, for the game. I mean, uh, typically people spending about uh, anywhere between half an hour to one hour, you know, on, on the game. Uh, how do you monetize them? I mean, once they buy the game, I mean, there's no other way to. So we were looking at uh, ideas to monetize the game through in-app purchases. So we built in batting power-ups, bowling power-ups, where uh, um, you know people can. Uh, so your your customer who has bought this game uh, can once again become a customer. So that that was, that was a two motivation for us to keep building the game, and uh, we still have a long way to go uh, to make it even better. Right. So let us. Can you just walk us through? Let's say there are a lot of us here including me, we haven't built any games before. So can you tell us, like, how do you start? What do you do? What kind of a team dynamics happen? You know, how do you go step by step into building even the simplest of games? Maybe you can take a really simple one, right. but you can also talk about something that is more complex like okay. this. See, for us, uh, building a game uh, starts with, uh, you know, looking for uh, gaps in the market or identifying an opportunity. Uh, that comes first, you know. Um, See, for example, uh, though cricket is a very crowded uh, um, uh, uh, thing, and uh, you know, uh, just to the hundreds of games out there, uh, but we felt that uh, so though it's very deceptive, it looks like it's going to be very difficult. A lot of players out there, but we felt that uh, even the big studios uh, uh, weren't either very serious about monetizing because they were busy making money elsewhere. So we felt there's an opportunity there if we are determined and a serious player, we could make money. So that was, uh, you know, th that comes from a, one, an idea could come from a business point of view. The other is that we, we get this spark, when, you know, great idea. Okay, I mean, we're really excited about the idea and, and we want to go about uh, doing it. But typically, uh, that is the broad uh, this thing, uh, coming down to the nuts and bolts of things. Let's say, uh, as a um, uh, company that uh, this year we have to produce, uh, say, 10 games or this quarter we have to get uh, four games. Um, then we broadly uh, know which area we want to develop. It's like, you know, it could be, you know, we know that uh, racing games do well or action games do well. You know, you get these uh, data and keep uh, reading and you know that you, you, the team also is very familiar with what's going on outside, you know. These kind of games work now, you know, these kind of games are now not, not working anymore, not popular anymore. So, basically a team that is very well informed about what is con what's the content that is out there, and then uh, you you sit with that team, and then you decide, uh, uh, you know, what kind of uh, a game do we do? You know, uh, for example, it could be an existing game uh, where you could uh, you could improve it multifold. Like for example, all innovations are only incremental innovations. Before uh, all great innovation, like before Google, there were search engines, but it's just it's the Google that made uh, you know a big uh, splash. So for example, uh, we know this game Temple Run. Uh, a game, I, I don't know if uh, many of them are familiar, it's a hugely popular game. I think I see most of them nodding their head. So uh, after Temple Run, if you see, there was this uh, Agent Dash game, which follows a similar gameplay, but they made it really excellent, you know, very excellent graphics on this thing. And, um, and it's a much better game. So sometimes you could take an existing game idea and improve on it multifold and uh, deliver the game. Or uh, we have team of uh, creatives, so this includes writers and, and artists, we, we sit and brainstorm and come up with a basic idea and then we build on that. So what? So a bunch of people sit around and say, okay, let's do this game. 
and maybe there is this marketplace. Oh, there is this brilliant idea. And then somebody says, wow, this is an idea. Why don't we do a game here? And somebody says, how about a variation of this? Okay, that's great for discussions. Then what is the next step? What do you guys go and actually okay. do? You start writing code or yeah. you start painting screens? Right. Or? See, the, the, what happens is sometimes what is very amazing uh, in the discussion phase when you put down the paper, add character, and then uh, you, you may think it may work, it may not work. And then, um, so the, the, the next process would be to each of the teams, uh, you know, would go and uh, develop a kind of a storyboard, uh, you know, with character, background, the, you know, look and feel and all that. So even at that process, there's some amount of filtering happens. So this has uh, good gameplay. Uh, this may work. So this gameplay is very difficult, very new. Uh, it may take a lot of time to pick up. So at that point, you know, the gameplay, uh, the art, graphic, at that point, a lot of decision making happens. So you start with sketches? I mean, yes, yes. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about the storyboard itself? So if I want to build a game, I go and draw a few sketches to start with? Or? Okay. So um, uh, first thing that we, uh, there, is, uh, there are two things to this. One is uh, the look and feel. I mean, let's say there's a character in your game. You need to see what kind of a style, what kind of a other thing. So there, there'll be a character artist who will go and give you different kind of characters and say this works. And there'll be a background artist who will create those backgrounds for the game. So that is one, one thing, the art side. The other thing is game playability. Now you may have wonderful idea, wonderful graphics, but if the gameplay is not going to be very exciting, you know, all this is, is, is not going to work. So, we, so the, uh, there's, there'll be another person who's working, hey, this, is this work? And this is typically a guy who keeps playing games all the time, so he knows, you know, this kind of a gameplay I've seen, this works fine, or this may not work. So there are two things uh, that happens at this phase. That is the design decision and the game playability, you know, is this wor working or not. Oh, that's awesome. Did you just hear what he said? He said that if you play games, you have a job. Isn't that the coolest job on the earth? You know, that you can be yeah. playing games and somebody will be paying you money for it. And um, so that's, that's cool. So then what happens? Then you go and write the code or, or you After go that, uh, we, uh, we have to do the uh, uh, quick prototype to just see one level, how it's working. At that point in time, we fine tune the gameplay, we fine tune the art assets. And then we go for the uh, you know, level building. You know, we build multiple levels, 10 levels, 20 levels. And then you go for the action coding. Yeah. Can we see another game? Yeah, sure. This was a, a, a game which was on all uh, platforms, Android, uh, iOS, and uh, uh, all um, multi-platform game, including uh, Java feature phones. Okay, good. Okay, why don't we just open up for a few questions, and I have a whole bunch, but in case you don't have, I'll come back and fill it up. Um, yeah, you started first, so. Okay. Uh, the game engine, uh, I mean, okay. See, uh, I, my, our fav my favorite uh, is, uh, is uh, we use the Unity engine because it helps us uh, develop uh, a game and port it across platform quite effortlessly, including uh, the support that's going to be done for Windows as well. I mean, Android is already there. 
So we try to use a game engine that gives you multi platform support because you can develop once and then deploy in multiple platforms. Uh, Raj, can you just elaborate on the game engine for those people who do not know? Okay. Uh, we've used this uh, game engine called Unity, uh, which is a 3D game engine. Uh, uh, this game engine is very powerful. You can code in uh, you know a lot of languages, you know, from uh, uh, JavaScript to you know C sharp to whatever. I, I mean, it's very flexible, and uh, you can work very fast uh, with this uh, uh, game engine. You can, uh, you know, across platforms, you know, Android, uh, iOS, uh, Windows, PC, uh, web-based, all kinds of uh, platforms you can develop. Uh, so that's why we use it. Okay. We'll take some other and then. And we were one of the earliest, uh, probably the, among the first to use Unity in this country. Okay. Okay. Sell the game. Right. I think uh, you know that's uh, it's uh, actually uh, uh, today it's very uh, uh, very very easy. I mean, you have the app stores. Uh, you just need to register yourself in the app store, um, make an account in your name with bank, uh, you know, all that, and it's very simple. It just takes a day uh, to set up your uh, account in, in whether Android or any other app store, Google Play, anyway. It's really simple. That's the the, sorry, it's just hundred dollars or fifty dollars or even free in with some stores. You can, yeah. Good morning, sir. So, I was I want a question about uh, the fantasy cricket. Is it out in the market as yet? It's uh, you can download it right now All on right. Android. So, uh, let's uh, let's take the game market as such. Uh, if you take a platform like Windows or Xbox or PS3, mm. the game sells because of the reality of it. If I go for FIFA, I want uh, Lionel Messi to run fast. Right. And here there's a fantasy element to it. And right. uh, if you say cricket, because I have a cricket app of my own on Android, right. this market is restricted mostly to the cricket playing nations where people take the game very seriously. So uh, sorry if I'm uh, questioning the right. uh, or being a rude critic. Mm -hmm. So how do you justify the fantasy part of it winning the audience there? Because it's a serious game that according to the Indians. Right. And uh, uh, the interest of the game when I'm able to power up I will be able to win matches easily. Okay. So after you get the monetization part of it is done, the app no longer, I think, in the in terms of gaming experience, it doesn't hold the interest of the users. Mm. I might be wrong. I'm just trying to okay. question the, uh, See, to actually, understand your idea. Yeah. See, actually, just a creative uh, call we took. Uh, see, uh, the other two games, it's a three-game pack. World Cricket Championship is a three-game pack. You have World Cricket Championship, World Premier League. These two are very serious cricket games. It's like you know, it's like any other cricket. It's very very serious cricket game with action replay, with all the things that you want. It's a pure cricket game. Now we wanted to add more excitement, so we got a third cricket game. I mean, you don't like it, you know, you don't want people flying or fireballs are being thrown at you. You don't need to play a game. So this is the third game. So you have a choice. So that's why we didn't make the other game. Uh, with the other two games are very serious, uh, f uh, you know, for people like you. And there are different kind of people who would probably like the fun and the fantasy cricket league. Okay. And the other thing about uh, it is a reality that cricket is very popular in seven or eight nations. So, so you got to make your money within the seven or eight nations. That is a limitation. Yeah. So I, I'll just do a follow up of the question in that sense that you talked about if you want to really build a very very serious game. Mm -hmm. meant only for people who are like really crazy about cricket. Okay. Uh, what are the things that you do I mean, in, in the game design as well as development, for example? Okay, uh, I think... Uh, if you had unlimited budget, you know, okay. let me just take it out of the way. Right. Okay, so you would want to make it uh, super realistic. You know, you would do a lot of motion capture. Let's say, you know, uh, how would, uh, you know, uh, a particular, let's say, how would Sachin play? You know, you would want to do a motion capture of Sachin himself. So it, you would really spend a lot of